Chapel Baptist Church. We're glad to have those of you who are here with us this morning. You would go ahead and stand, turning your hymnals to number 249. Hymn number 249, Glorify Thy Name. Amen. Sing it out. Psalms chapter number 16 verses 8 through 11. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in the, in the hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forever. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we do love and praise you. And Lord, it is true that in your presence truly is fullness of joy. I just pray that we'd be filled with your joy, with your praise and honor this morning, Lord, that you would be lifted up. And even though we're few in number, Father, we're still powerful through you. Sure. I just pray for that you'd be with all of those here this morning, those that are watching. Uh, Lord, just... Uh, uh, we know that your Holy Spirit is not limited by anything, and we just pray that your word would, would reach out and touch all of our people today, Father, and other churches that are doing the same thing this morning, Lord, that uh, your word would go out uh, through the, the airwaves and be powerful and strong. We love and praise you. We look forward to what you're going to do today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Well, we're just going to move right along. Thank you very much. All right, turn in your hymnals to number 217. Our next hymn will be, Oh, How I Love Jesus, hymn number 217. <laughs>
when we all get to heaven. Let's sing it out. special music, of course, not putting the choir in the choir loft and things like that, and, and uh, not doing offering, but uh, we are preaching the Word of God, amen? It's an important thing, and so it's good to have you with us. If you've got your Bible, go ahead and get it out, and uh, uh, don't worry, I won't leave you standing too long here, but I uh, want you to go to 2 Corinthians. I had studied uh, quite a bit this week, you know, when I was preaching on Sunday morning, most of you that are with us. Know that on Sunday evenings we've been going through Genesis and some of the characters in the Bible were on Joseph right now. But I felt like probably departing from that was the way to go. And um, just been studying some things that people have been talking to me about this week. And, you know, in uh, 1 Peter, which is a letter that's really dedicated to believers going through difficulty and suffering, in chapter 4, verse 12, the Apostle Peter says, don't think it's strange. Think it not strange concerning fiery trials which are to try you. And I know for many of us, this is a trying time we're going through uh, with restrictions and that kind of thing. I know a lot of people are having to watch at home um, on online, and, and we're glad they're able to do that. But I just want to point out that God is not surprised by trouble. Jesus said in John 16, 33, in this world you shall have tribulation. You will have trouble. That was a promise. And so God is not surprised when we're going through difficulty. We live in a fallen world. It's kind of busted and things don't always go the way uh, we would like them to go. And sometimes we don't understand. I know God is in charge and we want to lift him up, praise him, and thank him anyways. And so 
I believe church is essential. That's right, amen. I believe amen. church is essential. So we're glad those of you that are here got to come. So if you've got your Bible, 2 Corinthians 1, I want to just say that really the message is going to be somewhat topical this morning. And the topic, not to be depressing at all, but I've been thinking about the topic of death. <laughs> and uh, this, right. like I say, not to be morbid or anything like that, but, but <clears throat> death is in the news. I mean, one of the most uh, dominant news feed that Lauren's phone is giving her is literally, it's like a, uh, just a clicker of, of deaths related to COVID-19 or the coronavirus. And I just thought that was interesting. Mortality rate among humans is 100%, by the way. <laughs> right? Yeah, like, we, don't, we don't get out alive. Yet I believe most of the time people are far too flippant with life, and they don't consider death seriously. And if anything, this time we're going through has caused us to take note of it. Yesterday, a, a baby died, and they believe it could be COVID-related. The baby was positive in Chicago. This made international news, by the way. You can find this on the national news feed, international news feed, that one baby that may, under, under a year old died. And that should be... Uh, news to us because it's a tragic loss. But I did think it was interesting that some of the centers for um, Planned Parenthood boldly announced they're still doing dozens of abortions in uh -huh. Chicago. And those are also proponents. Many of those there are proponents of what we call birthday abortions. They believe in the right to kill children all the way up until and after they're born. So I do think there's an irony as we elevate life the way I think God would like us to, and also note that um, death is a reality. And so we're going to talk about that. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, um, I have a flip phone, and I don't think Brother Daryl Coley has a flip phone, because he sent me 30 text messages <laughs> stacked on each other. And mine shuffle them. So I had to decode <laughs> this uh, eternally long message. I mean, he, he gave me a 15-minute message. It took me an hour to figure it out. <laughs> Amen? But it was good. Matter of fact, I, I could, I, I'm partially going to bring out some things because Brother Daryl had this text, uh, this passage texted to me. And I want to read it, and we're going to talk this morning not, not just about death, but about the comfort as believers that we have in the face of death. The Apostle Paul, just for continuity's sake, we're going to start in verse 1, writing to the church of Corinth. He says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in all Achaia, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Lord, we love you and praise you. God, I thank you for your word and Lord, I pray that this morning you'd give clarity and comfort to us. Lord, as your body, your children, God, I pray that we would hear your voice this morning. Lord, as your sheep, we want to hear the voice of our shepherd through your word. And Lord, we are so grateful 
God, that you are on the throne, you're in charge, and God, we lift up our country right now, we lift up our leaders, and we pray for those that are scared and panicking, Lord, those that are um, fighting this, this epidemic that we're going through right now, God, I pray that you would uh, take care of those that of necessity or in harm's way. And God, I, I just pray for our church that we would be the light that we're supposed to be, that we would be encouraged and edified this morning, and that we would be equipped for the work of the ministry that you've given us. God, I pray if there's someone here that's never trusted you, they've never received the gift of life, eternal life, I pray your Holy Spirit begin to work in their heart even now. And Lord, above all, we want you to be exalted, lifted up, and glorified because you're worthy. We love you and we give you this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. So, this passage, and Paul writes, this is really one of my, my favorite letters of Paul, 2 Corinthians, and he lets them know at Corinth that, that he had been through trouble. He says that there in verse 9 that we had the sentence of death in ourselves, literally didn't think we were going to make it is what he's saying, thought we were going to die. And he says this was so that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raises the dead. Death is something that today is literally, it's being pushed, put in our face all the time. And, and I, I don't know, I think that God can use that. It could be a good thing. But I do want to point out that that we're all going to die, amen, and right. from Christ coming back. But I think today we see something that is a biblical truth. We see it being played out in front of us, and that is this. Based on a Christian worldview, a biblical worldview, we should recoil at death. Yeah. Because death, the Bible says, is an enemy. Mm -hmm. This is the first, uh, on the topic of death, first thing we're going to look at, consider, is that death is an enemy. 1 Corinthians 15, 26 the Bible says that the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. One day there will be no more death. Death is an enemy. Death is the result of sin. Romans 5.12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin. So that when, when Adam and Eve, when you go back to God's created order, listen, God made a perfect place. He made perfect people. and, and But he also gave them a law and the ability to break that law. And when they did, the Bible says sin entered and death entered with sin. Right. So you could say that death is an intruder. Death is a consequence of sin. Romans 6 says the wages of sin is death. And I think it's interesting that in these days, even our pagan media, Hollywood and places like that, are pointing out that life is more important than lifestyle. Wow. That, that you hear these phrases being thrown around like, it's a matter of life and death. But what is life about? Is our goal just to outlive our peers? Is our goal just to see how long we can live? Because life without Christ really is not life at all. And the Bible makes it clear that sometimes life is too much. He said in verse 8 that we were pressed out of measure above strength in so much that we despaired even of life. Mm -hmm. Listen, this is a very real problem. Do you know that I believe what's more dangerous than a pandemic or an epidemic is despair? Right. I mean, this is this is deadly. He said that we despaired even of life. I think it's important to note that God understands this. No, God understands this. I like the psalmist because David, there were times when he was afraid and worried and he felt like God wasn't listening. And we know that because he says that, God, why are you so far from hearing me? And so the Bible says very clearly that while death is an enemy, the truth is sometimes life is too much for us. Life can be more than we can handle. Do you know that a statistic that many of us probably find a little concerning? Do you know that on average about 1.4 million Americans attempt suicide every year? Wow. 
and over 50,000, if, if the CDC is correct, die by suicide every year. About 129 people a day will die by suicide. I just thought that was very disturbing. Since the COVID-19 has popped up and started claiming American lives, since that has happened, there's been 11,000 suicides. There's been 2,000 COVID-19 victims, a little over 2,000, and that number, we're told, is going to just keep getting bigger. But isn't it odd that, that we're almost in an epidemic of, of suicide and and with some of the things that's going on, I can't help but imagine that in retrospect, this time may be even worse than they're pro projecting when it comes to that. And, and so death is an enemy, but sometimes life is too much. Something else that can be depressing to people is not only death is an enemy, but death, biblically speaking, is a certainty. Mortality rate is 100%. Hebrews 9.27 says, It is appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. See, death is, is coming. That used to be something that was preached. People have acted like that it's old-fashioned to preach about hell and death, but the fact is, those are realities. Amen. That's right. And, and sooner or later, we're going to have to face death. Death has affected our church body even this week. I mean, Brother Don, last night we stopped and stood in the yard and Miss Karen came to the door and we talked at a distance there in Indian Springs and Karen just cried. She said, 61 years married. She said she doesn't know how she'll be able to do anything because it's always been Don and Karen, not just Karen. And Don passed away and, and we know that death is something that we will face. But while death is a certainty... May I just point out that the fear of death, bondage to the fear of death, is optional. Yes. It's not, not, it's not a certainty that you, it's not a necessity. Because Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself, speaking of Christ, likewise took part of the same, that through death he, Jesus, might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Do you know what's going on in the world right now? You're watching bondage to the fear of death unfold. Uh, yeah. People are panicked. And, and, and the irony is, is that many of them do not even realize, listen, that even if the most dramatic Deadly models of the projections for COVID work out. It will still pale in comparison to other causes of death. Do you know that 480,000 deaths in 2019 were tobacco related? Somebody says, don't put your hands to your face or to your mouth. And especially if it's got tobacco in it because it's about <laughs> 10 times even the, I mean, I was shocked by that. 88,000 alcohol-related deaths. Listen, that literally means that COVID-19 that's shutting down sports, that it may be saving lives not because ball players passing the disease, but because the beer that's not going to be sold, you'll probably save more lives than disease prevention. I mean, we laugh, but I mean, if you just go by the numbers, these are things I was looking up last night. I mean, alcohol and tobacco, and I don't think that even counted the vaping and drugs and all the other stuff. This is just tobacco, 480,000 deaths, 1,300 a day wow. in the U.S. Now, I was, it, I was told this morning that, well, you realize that the COVID is going to overlap a lot of those, right? Because people who already have compromised pulmonary systems, lungs, and things like that, but when I was talking to my wife, she said, well, you're not like playing down COVID. I said, no, I'm just pointing out that if it don't get you something else, we'll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, this is the bad news. We're going to get to the good news, amen. But, I mean, life, life is certain. Matter of fact, working on the ranch with my dad, you probably don't have to worry about either of those things, amen. <laughs> Man, I mean, I, I just thought uh, that we, I mean, we, we joke, we don't want to make it a, a laughing matter, but death is an enemy that literally waiting around every corner. Uh -huh. Life is, is fragile. Do you realize there's blood vessels? There's blood vessels that are so tiny, yet in the wrong place at the right time if they bust you're gone mm -hmm. and so that could cause somebody to just be fearful and if you don't know Jesus the Bible says you're in bondage to the fear of death everything right. that you see that you value everything physical that you cherish will be taken from you by death and that's why we better have a life built on that which is unseen this is why in Psalms 90, Moses, in a psalm that he wrote, challenges us and calls on God to teach us to number our days. <clears throat> teach us to number our days, not so that we would be morbid, but so that we would realize that life is short. Listen, time is life. This is why if, if, if no other reason than to remind us that killing time should not be an option for the chil for children of God because time is life. That's right. You kill time. Listen, time's precious. It's short. You kill time, you're throwing your life away. I mean, we need to be engaged in things that matter, things that are going to bear fruit because death is a certainty. In 1 Corinthians 15, I mentioned in verse 26, but if you just read it, that death is an enemy. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. I, I think it's important to jump over to verse 53 of 1 Corinthians 15. If you've got your Bible, you may want to look at this because it says this. For this corruptible, speaking of this body, must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality... Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Yes, right. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? That's right. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We have victory. See, death is a certainty, but for a Christian, death is temporary. That's right. Death is temporary. It's not permanent. Listen, I believe, and, and there's a lot of there's a lot of cults and false religions that throw out a lot of false doctrine because they don't know the word of God. Right? People that say, well, when you're dead, you're just dead. That's it. Listen, if you're at home and Jehovah's Witness knock on your door, one of their big selling points is you've been told there's burning hell. Well, there's no hell to fear. When you're dead, you're dead. Well, by the way, if I was going to make up a religion, that'd be the first thing I'd do away with is hell, amen? Because yeah. yeah. I don't, I mean, that's a terrible idea. I don't like the thought of it. But it's still true. But it's not, but the Bible teaches that death is temporary, and after death, there's a judgment. And it's not just, listen, it's not just for Christians. Yeah, we're going to give an account, but the Bible makes it clear that death's, a temporary state, even for lost. Listen, in Luke 16, verse 19 through 23, Jesus tells the story of the rich man and Lazarus. And he says, listen, the rich man died, Lazarus died. Lazarus was in a place of comfort in Abraham's bosom. And the Bible says, and in hell, the rich man lifted up his eyes in torment. Mm -hmm. Now, that was the grave. The Bible says later on in Revelation 20, verse 11, Listen, something scarier than COVID is when I read this passage, Revelation chapter 20, and if you maybe don't have this marked or memorized, you ought to mark this. Verse 11 says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, yes. stand before God. Right. See, we'll be there. Yes. We're all going to be there. I saw the dead, small and great. Small and great. That means everybody, everybody's going to be there. 
<coughs> saw the dead small and great stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. You know, God's completely fair. There will be a day where everything, every right, every, excuse me, every wrong will be righted. Every uh, good deed will be rewarded. Every bad deed will be made known. It says they were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And by the way, the rich man that's in torment, that'll be his time. To stand before God. He's already in torment, the Bible says. But death and hell, it says they delivered up the dead that were in them, and they were judged, every man according to his to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. It's probably one of the scariest passages I've ever seen. That's scary. But you know the Bible says in Matthew 10, 28, that we're not to fear them which kill the body. Do you know the worst thing that COVID can do is kill the body? That's the worst thing it can do. And the Bible says fear not them which kill the body. Death, listen, is temporary. Paul said to live is Christ, but to die is gain. How can a person go from this Looking at this enemy of death, this certainty that we dread, how can we get to a place where we say, hey, I'm not scared of that anymore? I think it, the, the key is what we see in the Word of God, Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. So even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That's good. Listen, I remember times when, when we were in the hospital with Corey. There were, there were times, listen... When the children on both sides of Tories, there, there was there was one particular week where both the children, the parents we got to know on both on room on either side, died. I mean, within just a short time. And I'll I'll be real honest, it felt like on that eleventh floor that death was almost palpable. You could just almost feel it. And listen, and I remember people asking, how how can because I would try to have like a little ministry there in the waiting room with people. And people would cry out and say, well, how, how is this possible? But listen, the fact that God is our shepherd does not mean we will not walk through the valley of the That's shadow right. of death. That's right. But what it does mean is that we don't have to fear because he's with us. Living, listen, is Christ for a child of God. And to die, he said, is gain. 2 Corinthians 5. The Bible gives us a perspective. 2 Corinthians 5, 8 says, For we are confident, I say, and willing, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether we, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also we're made manifest in your conscience. As Paul goes on to say, we've been given a ministry of reconciliation. Do you know that if you stand before God, having rejected the only part in Christ Jesus, you will stand condemned before a righteous God? That's terrifying. That would be terrifying. Death is temporary. But we don't have to fear it because, as we pointed out there in Hebrews chapter 2, it says, He, through death, destroyed him that had the power of death. Jesus literally tasted death for us. The reason all I'll have is the shadow of death is because I don't have to fear the second death. Yes. See, Jesus took death in our place. He died on the cross. God the Son Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died so that we could live. He was buried and he rose again, the Bible says, and he's alive. I remember just a few months ago, some of our, our leaders in the Wednesday night program may remember this. It was at the beginning of the school year this last year, but one of our bus kids who died, hasn't really been in church, we were talking about Jesus, and I mentioned at close to the end of the service that Jesus died and he rose again, and he just raised his hand and he goes, 
He's not dead? I said, nope. He said, where is he? <laughs> well, he ascended, the Bible says. And the Bible says that he's with us. Jesus said, lo, I'm with you always. But listen, he's alive, and that's important because we don't have a dead God. We don't have a Amen. God that is bound by death. We have a God that triumphed over death. And that's why, by faith, we can know Christ. And he said in John 17, 3, Jesus said, This is eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true God. Do you know that if you know Jesus, eternal life's already started? That's good. That's good. It doesn't start when you get to heaven. It starts when you trust Christ and you begin to walk Amen. with him by faith. And so, just as we know that death is temporary, we can have victory in death. Through Jesus. And that's really the point. See, I believe the comfort we have here in times like this is the fact that we can point people to him that triumphed over death. Because if you had a cure for COVID and gave it to everybody, those people would still die one day and face Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if you get... Listen, I've heard people say, well, when will America get back to normal? Well, listen, if normal is a bunch of pagan people living as if there's no judgment, no death, then I hope it doesn't go back to normal. That's right. Listen, tragedy is not having your life cut short by a particular virus. Tragedy is living to be 100 and not knowing Jesus. That's right. It, I mean, that's a tragedy. The gospel is that, that listen, that knowing Jesus... Trusting him by faith. Listen, that choosing to follow this word that was made flesh and dwelt among us. Choosing to follow him is our only ticket out. Listen, it's a, it's a sinking ship. The only lifeboat is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Right. There's a lot of good people. And you know what? You, it it kind of it, it kind of is, it, to me, kind of a comparison here. You can't tell by looking if someone's got COVID. That's why they're saying, you know, social distance, don't get together. Because you may not have any symptoms, but you may be, may be carrying this, you know, deadly disease. And, and in a similar way, what that means is you can't tell by looking who's healthy and who's not. And can I tell you something? We've got neighbors who look pretty Christian, but they don't know Jesus. That's right. I mean, I just... I think it's interesting, and listen, we don't we don't want to be foolish. We want to listen. I want to follow suggestions and guidelines and all of that kind of stuff. But I will tell you this: that the real danger is going through life without Jesus Christ. And if I've got neighbors that don't know Jesus, I ought to be shining a light, pointing them to Him. And so, I want to wrap this up and close. I. I know that a lot of our folks are watching this, and so uh, invitation may seem like an interesting time. I, I do believe you can talk to God at home, amen? Mm -hmm. You don't have to be at church to talk to God. And, and we have a time of invitation at Lindsay Chapel not to try to get you to do something that's not real. That's not our, our desire. Our desire is that if you've heard the word of God and God's dealt with you, that you would do something about it. Let me give some applications real quick before we close. And this, if God's spoken to you about it, during the invitation time, you need to do something about it. Some of us have been so flippant towards life that we are more concerned about spreading a disease today than we were about spreading the gospel yesterday. Wow. And, and I'm speaking last year and last week. I mean, I realize now that I, I've got... I've got folks that I, that I go past their house all the time, and I don't know if they're saved. And there has got to be ways during this time that we can ask God, God, give us ways that we can share the life-changing truth of the gospel with those who don't know. Listen, there will be people, and you may say, well, Clay, we're not supposed to go visit. Don't worry. If you notice, we're, on, we're in McIntosh County. If you go to gas station, Walmart, Dollar General. You can visit people all day long. People are everywhere. Yep. Amen? Yep. I mean, all the people that are locked up in other places, 
They're in Walmart in the McIntosh County. I mean, it was packed last time I went by there. Amen? People say, well, you were there. Well, I mean, yeah, I was there. But, I mean, it was just, it was just crazy. But you know what? People are talking about it. People, people bring it up. And you know what? Dad, Dad and I, we were, at, we were at the place we eat sandwiches all the time. And a guy that I see in there a lot, but he, we started talking this week. And he was talking about the stock market and retirement and uncertainty and things be winding up okay. Or maybe maybe they won't wind up okay. I said, you know what I think? He said, what I said? I don't think I have to worry about retirement. I think Jesus is coming back. And you may say, well, you could have said that anytime. But can I tell you something? This dilemma we're going through kind of set the atmosphere to where I could bring up the Lord Jesus Christ and talk about him like, yeah, that's right. like, it, like I mean, it didn't seem that awkward. And I'm just saying, some of us, application, we, we ought to ask God, God, who, who would you put in my path today? Listen, you can share gospel with somebody and stay six feet away from them. Uh-huh. Sure can. Amen? Yeah. You can. As a matter of fact, some people might want to punch you in the eye. Having that distance may give you a little head start. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But here's the application. We ought to take it back. Ask God. God, give me opportunity through this situation. Some of us have essential jobs. You're going to be working and you're going to be seeing people at work. And you'll have an opportunity now that you didn't have last year. And then if you're here and you're not saved, life is scary. Life is scary. And death is certain. But if the Holy Spirit of God has touched your heart, listen, the scariest part about judgment is not that the judge is mean or cruel. He's just and righteous. That's right. Amen. And the only thing to fear in judgment is standing before him without an advocate. But Jesus Christ died. He died. He tasted death so that he could live to be our advocate. Mm -hmm. And so he is our emergency worker. He's our lifeline that can get us out of the dilemma that we're in if we call on him. Romans chapter 10 says, All that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. The Bible makes it clear that wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so if you're here this morning and you're not saved, why not, why not trust Christ? If the Holy Spirit of God has convicted your heart, don't, don't leave and, and just do business as normal, as usual. Today can be a turning point where you repent, turn from self and sin, and you turn to Christ as your Lord and Savior. You may say, Clay, I just feel like that would change everything. Well, everybody's changing everything anyways. Might as well do it for Christ's sake. Amen? Amen. Right. Right. Amen. And so I'm going to ask Miss Kristen to come to the piano. And <coughs> Dad challenged me. That's, that, no, seriously, Dad said, do you think you could preach a 35-minute message? I said, yeah, I call it my first point usually. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you ask me that? I did. I did. He did. He did. And I, listen, I want to honor my. It's rough when your dad is your pastor. Your pastor's dad. I want to honor both of them. Amen. So I don't know if I fit it inside of his time frame there, but that is very hypocritical in my mind. <laughs> but as as we wrap up, though, I do want to just say this. That if, you're, that if you're here, and you may say, I'm not normally here, but I'm here this morning. You're not here by accident. Jesus loves you. He died for you. He orchestrated situations so that you could hear this message that Jesus loves you. And whether you live for months, years, the truth is one day we're going to die. That's right. And it's not something to be scared of. It's something to sober us. So that we as believers will number our days, make the best use of the time we're given. But if we're not saved, it would cause us to go to Christ for the forgiveness and the pardon 
and the peace that comes only through Jesus Christ and salvation. And so, as Miss Kristen plays, we're going to wind up our service. I'd like you to stand. We're not going to sing. This time is not to twist your arm, but it's to give you an opportunity, if God has spoken to you, to do something about it. The altars are open if you need to come. Listen, if you can do business with God where you're at, that's fine. But if you say, Brother Clay, I need to be saved. We've got people that would share with you how to be saved. You don't have to leave lost. If the Holy Spirit's dealt with you, would you step out and come? The pastor will be right here. He can meet with you. He can talk to you. The altars are open. If there's people God's put on your heart, if there's steps that you need to take, if you need to be better prepared, purpose that today. and that's great if you need to come would you come the invitation never ends here but this song will just have another verse or two and this part of our service will be closed so I want to challenge you don't, don't delay if God's dealt with you do something about it she'll play another verse the Bible says to not be a hearer of the word, but to be a doer of the word. And then if you're saved, we need to celebrate the victory that we have in Jesus. Amen. We sang when we all get to heaven, but the truth is that's only all of us that know Jesus. Amen. And if you don't know him today, be a good day to get to know him. She'll play the one more verse. If no one comes, she'll close the invitation. I guess, uh, to do the same this evening. And uh, so if you want to see a miracle, those of you that want to see one, uh, come this evening, and uh, I'm going to preach the same 35-minute message, if the Lord wills. Uh, it's so good to have you in the Lord's house today. For those of you that are watching at home, we do appreciate you uh, caring enough to um, uh, sit still for a while and listen to the Word of God. We will be here at 6 o'clock this evening. I'll be preaching this evening, and we'd love to have all of you back. We want to practice the same precautions that we have. We want to be in compliance as much as is possible. So as we dismiss this morning, I do want to ask you to exit in groups and go ahead and, and uh, leave the facility as soon as you can. I know that's hard for us because we're so used to just being together and, and just uh, huddling together. So uh, it sounds awful for me to tell you to exit, uh, but that is in keeping with our distancing, and so we would ask you to do that, and uh, we love you and praise you. Just praise God for your being here today. Uh, I want to ask Brother Daryl, if you will, to come to the podium and dismiss us, and again, we will look forward to seeing you this evening at 6. Well, thank you again for another opportunity to come uh, today at uh, Ghetto to Peter Big A and everything. And God, I just want to thank you for the ability to lift up the name of Jesus again today. Lord, my heart just goes to the issue of the, the thief on the cross. The thief just asked you, remember me. God, that's all we want to do is remember us. God, during this difficult time, God, we just know that you're there. You're in the midst of this storm. And we just pray for the people here today. That as they go about their day, that Lord, they'll just have to trust in you and know that, as Pastor Clay said this morning, that death is not the final thing. Death is the beginning of an eternal life with you. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.